You're no doubt familiar with Alanis Morissette from her hit 90s angsty rock songs, Ironic, You Oughta Know, and Hand in My Pocket. But what was behind the singer's rage? HBO's controversial new documentary, Jagged, goes behind the scenes to tell us. But Alanis isn't happy about it. Keep watching to find out everything we know from this new trailer. Let's quickly look into what is it about. The documentary follows Alanis from her early days as a child actor and pop star to the start of her career as we know it in Los Angeles. It shows us the creation of the angry rock goddess we all know and love. But, despite sitting for interviews for hours upon hours in order to make the documentary, Alanis herself has reportedly said she is so unhappy with the final version of the film that she no longer supports it and will not be attending any events and promotion of the documentary. So why does she hate it? Alanis said the documentary is someone else's reductive take on a story much too nuanced for them to ever grasp or tell. What a takedown. She went on to say that the film is salacious and that she could see from even the first cut of the film that she had been misled by producers in order to gain her participation. But what does Alanis mean when she says the documentary is reductive? First, Alanis said it betrayed her trust. Apparently, the documentary includes false stories and facts that aren't true. While Alanis admitted the film was beautiful, she didn't feel that it lined up with her actual experiences and was shocked that despite sitting for all those interviews, this is the story that the film chose to tell. Then what about her rocky relationships with music execs? Alanis's business manager stole over $5 million from her and was sentenced to six years in prison. Other producers and executives have been accused of sexual assault and harassment, controlling behavior that borders on abuse, and other generally crazy situations. Did this behavior transfer to Alanis? A former nanny of hers came forth to say that she was prohibited from leaving one of Alanis's children's homes, rooms, for her entire shift, which could last over 12 hours. She claims she suffered emotional and psychological distress from working so long without any breaks. However, it seems as though those controversial figures are missing from the documentary. And it leaves out her family and the people she collaborated with in those rocky early years. The film seems to portray Alanis as someone who every one recognized at first glance to have that it factor that is needed to become a superstar. And that Hollywood and the music industry welcomed her with open arms. But this is not actually the case. Alanis faced an extreme amount of opposition, especially early on. From her peers to the system in place at the time, her road to stardom was not as smooth as the documentary would have you think. Although the film does touch on her history of sexual abuse, it is juxtaposed with highlights from the singer's career that perhaps present an inaccurate view of how things really unfolded. It seems at points that the film is hinting towards dark themes that they were unable to convey in the film either because of lack of information or because there is simply a lack of storyline in the events that actually happened. So why did she participate in the documentary to begin with? Helena said she agreed to be in the documentary because she was led to believe by the director, Alison Clayman, that it would celebrate the 25th anniversary of her Jagged Little Pill album release. She was told one story by production to get her to cooperate, and she was happy with the direction they had told her they were going to take the film in. In addition, she released a statement saying that she was interviewed for the documentary during a time in which she she was experiencing postpartum depression following the birth of her child, during a lockdown for COVID-19, and during what was a very vulnerable time for her. Alanis made it sound as though she was coerced into participating for the documentary under false pretenses. Within the film, they certainly questioned the Canadian singer about what were sure to be some triggering topics for her. In the questionable emotional state she was already in, it seems that the process of making the film ended up to not be a positive one for her. She has addressed the same sensitive topics before, in a Broadway musical inspired by her music that she created with Diablo. Cody, so it is something about this documentary specifically that did not sit well with Alanis. Next, what will we see in the documentary? The majority of Jagged focuses on the early stages of Alanis's career, when her popularity was first taking off with the release of her album, Jagged Little Pill. The album sold 33 million copies. It was the second top-selling album by a female artist of all time. The film sits at the intersection of her life between when she was relatively unknown and when she became a household name, playing on every radio throughout the United States, Canada, and many other countries. Stylistically, Alanis is very different now from the version the documentary shows. While we know her today as a spiritual, hippie chick rock mother, the Alanis shown in the video is the version the 90s knew. Unapologetically grunge, with wild dark hair, no makeup, and oversized t-shirts on stage. For all its criticism, the film certainly captures a specific moment in time and recalls the alternative scene of the 90s well. The documentary features a number of interviews with various other people who knew the singer, including music critics, members of her band, and old friends. The film shows the behind-the-scenes life with her main band members. Alanis was friendly with them, but because she was technically their boss, they saw her as more of a mother figure and frequently went behind her back to engage in illicit drug use and try to capitalize on Alanis's fame to meet female fans. The documentary utilizes never-before-seen footage from Alanis's early tours, as well as present-day interviews with Alanis herself, and you'll be shocked by which experiences the production chose to keep in and which they chose to leave out. Like when Alanis was forced to lose weight by record execs. Alanis was reportedly tricked by music executives to lose a dangerous amount of weight at the 
the age of only 15. They would ask her to come into the studio to re-record vocals and then stage interventions about the way she looked. They wanted to make money by any means possible. Elena said the food she ate monitored and limited by an assistant. On shoots for her music videos, production staff would count the food items in the refrigerator, including counting single slices of cheese to make sure that Elena's wasn't sneaking even one piece of cheese in the middle of the night. If you think that sounds like torture, wait until you hear about her business dinners. When at restaurants with record executives, one producer who worked with Elena's would order entire pizzas for himself and eat them in front of her while she was only permitted to have a single black coffee with no milk or sugar. Not surprisingly, Elena's developed an eating disorder because of these experiences, affecting her health both physically and mentally up to this day. Next up, her love life. Elena's has said that she keeps a bag in her storage full of love letters from ex-boyfriends containing all kinds of drama and juicy details. But will we see any of this in the documentary? While well, Elena has said she kept her teenage experiences a secret to protect her family as well as future partners as she had many relationships that ended on a sour note, including during her teenage years when she was the victim of statutory rape. And even beyond that, her love life has been controversial, and we imagine there are a lot of people who wouldn't be too happy if she opened up about their time together. Alanis has dated a string of celebrities, from Dave Coulier of Full House fame to Ryan Reynolds, but is currently married to a spiritual hip-hop artist named Soul Eye, who she met at a meditation event in California and has actually released a song with. But while she may not tell us much about her love life, there are a number of other rumors that have been swirling around the singer for decades that fans have been waiting to hear about, like Alanis' feud with Radiohead, or the time she got held up at gunpoint before a meeting with Madonna. And do you think we'll get to hear from Tori Amos, who told the press Jagged Little Pill makes her ears hurt? We'll also get to see a lot of previously unheard background about the singer with footage to match, like the children's shows and talent shows that Alanis was on before making it big. She wrote her first song at 10 years old after all, and she ended up winning the grand prize at a youth talent search in Canada in the 80s for one of her original songs, the dramatically titled Fate Stay With Me. It looks like there is some truly breathtaking footage that has not been released before for Alanis fans. So there you have it, everything we know about HBO's controversial documentary about 90s superstar Alanis Morissette. Will you be watching, or will you wait for an Alanis-approved story to come out? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.